Hi, this is Bart Polson, and this video is for behavioral science statistics, and in it, we're looking at the fourth online quiz for chapter nine of our text, which is on t-tests. The first question is, imagine that a researcher conducts a repeated measures t-test with critical values of plus or minus 2.78 and gets an observed value or test value of t equals minus 3.30. What is the proper conclusion in this case? choices are retain the null hypothesis, reject the null hypothesis, or it can't be determined without additional information, or this is an impossible value of t for a repeated measures test. The answer here is to reject the null hypothesis. Um, let's take a quick look. Here's our distribution. We're doing, uh, we got plus or minus 2.78, so it's a two-tailed test, and that's where the yellow regions start. And our value of t is minus 3.30, so it is past the cutoff of 2.78. And it falls into, it goes past the critical value, it's into the critical region or the region of rejection. We reject the null hypothesis and say, well, it's possible to get a value this big through random sampling error. It's so unlikely that we don't think that that's what actually happened. We think there is really a difference uh, going on. All right, number two. When the means of two samples are being compared and Cohen's d equals zero, then A, there's no variation in the data, or B, N must be zero also, or C, the means are identical, or D, the distributions must have the same standard deviation as well as the same mean. Well, the answer is the means are identical. Now, let's take a look at the others. In A, there's no variation in the data. You would think the Cohen's D would be zero, but you know what? The, uh, uh, the denominator would be zero also, and you can't divide by zero, so actually Cohen's D would be undefined in that situation. N must be zero. No, you couldn't get any uh, scores at all if you didn't have anybody in it. And the distributions must have the same standard deviation. No, they would have the same mean, but not the, don't have to have the same standard deviation because it's the numerator here that we're concerned about. Let, let's take a look again at the formula here. The numerator uh, is the mean one minus mean two. And if those are identical if it's the same score, you know, a score minus itself, that's the only situation in which you would get zero. So if D is equal to zero, then the means must be identical. All right, if a researcher conducts an inferential test, such as a t-test, and rejects the null hypothesis, then what's the probability of a type two error? The choices are zero, one, one minus P, or O5. The answer here is zero, and it's for the same reasons we had with the type one error earlier. A type two error is a false negative. That is, um, it's assuming that nothing is happening when in fact something is happening. And the only way you can get a type two error is if you actually get a negative conclusion that you decide that nothing's happening. But in this case, we rejected the null hypothesis. And so there's, there's nothing there that can be false because we only have a positive result. And so it's a logical impossibility. So if you reject uh, the null hypothesis, the chance of a false negative is zero. You do, however, have the probability of a false positive, and that's going to have to do with your alpha ratio, uh, your alpha rate, but that's a different thing. All right, number four, if n is equal to infinity, if you have an infinite sample size, then what's the critical value of t for alpha equals 0, 05? Um, the choices are zero, plus minus 1.96, plus minus 3.30, or can't be determined without additional information. Well, um, truthfully, I should be saying that it's a uh, two-tailed test, but uh, the answer here is 1.96. And the reason for this is the t distribution is like the z, but it gets squished. And the smaller the samples, the more it gets squished. So if you have only like three people in each uh, group, that this the the critical values are going to be way out there. But as it as the sample gets larger, the t comes up and up and up until with an infinite sample it matches and it's identical to the normal distribution. In which case it would have the same cutoffs for a particular test that the normal distribution would have for the z scores. Last one, number five. If a researcher conducts a t test with an alpha of 01 and gets a p value of 0.25 then the researcher should reject the null hypothesis, switch to the standard alpha of 05, transform the data, or retain, that is, fail to reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, you're gonna retain. You're gonna fail to reject the null hypothesis. And the reason for that is because your p-value means what proportion or percentage of the distribution is further away from the mean than your sample. And in this case, it's 25%. On the other hand, if we're using an alpha of 01, that means it has to be in the most extreme 1%. But 
but this isn't the most extreme. 25%, that's, that's too much. There's a 25% chance of getting a value this big through just random sampling error when we're saying, no, it has to be less than 1%. So in this case, we retain the null hypothesis and we conclude that nothing is happening. Anyhow, that's it for the four quizzes on chapter nine. Hope that's helpful. Thanks.